back in June I visited Singapore for a bit more than one week and I also had some opportunities to go out into the rainforest or local parks and take some nice bird pictures. Unfortunately, for various reasons, I could only bring my RF 100 to 500. And that's maybe quite a bad phrasing of things because it's actually a great lens, very versatile, extremely sharp, but shooting at f7.1 in a dark rainforest also means that the sensor of the camera will not get a lot of light. And of course there are several things you can and should do in the field to get the best possible image quality, but there's also some things you can still do at home with the software to optimize and tweak the pictures a little bit. And I want to show you this in this video and also edit one picture until the end. I want to mention that this is of course not only applicable in tropical rainforests or pictures you took with the RF 100 to 500 millimeter lens, it basically applies to all kinds of scenarios where you don't get a lot of light on the sensor and the image quality could just be a bit better. So I'm going to work with Capture One for this video, but if you're using Lightroom it works basically the same and the few steps that are different I will explicitly mention them and tell you how you should proceed in Lightroom. So let's get started. First of all, I don't want to denoise all of these pictures, just the one that I actually want to edit now and that are taken at high ISO, so let's say 2500 ISO and higher. And I already did this step and I marked them here with an or orange color tag. You can use whatever system works for you. You can maybe also use a collection and put them there. Now I want to denoise these three pictures. Um, I can zoom in into one of them as you can see. Uh, I was at 12,800 ISO, um, but it's quite important to know that the basic sharpness of the image is there. So the image is sharp, it just lacks, uh, I mean, it just has too much noise. If the image would be somehow a bit blurry, then I would usually just use Topaz Sharpen AI to fix that because there you have a bit more fine control. But let's start with these three uh, sharp but rather noisy images. And what I'm going to do is select them all and then right click open with DxO Pure or 3. If this is not appearing for you, you can click on other and select it and browse it in your application folder. And from then on, it should always appear here. This is one of the few steps that is different with Lightroom. So here you would not do a right click and then open with, but you'd rather go to file, plugin extras, and then process with DxO Pure or 3. This will open the plugin version of DxO Pure Raw 3, which looks slightly different than the standalone version. I will now show you the workflow with the standalone version, but the steps are basically the same, it's just a different interface. So as you can see, here are the three images we just um, opened, and they're already selected, as you can see by this cyan uh, frame around the picture. And I will click on Process Now, and now I have some options to set for this. First of all, the processing um, engine, I would go for D-Prime XD. It gives the best quality, but it takes a tiny bit longer. And then we have the option for some optical or lens corrections, like the lens softness to correct for that. I usually turn this off because I otherwise find that even on the soft setting, it's already um, over sharpening the picture in my opinion. Um, below there is the option for the output format. So I want to edit this picture after. This means I will use DNG, which is a digital negative, similar to a raw or kind of a raw format actually. I also want that the files are stored in the same folder as the original files, but you can choose to have a new subfolder or store them somewhere completely else. And the files should be renamed by DxO and then the algorithm, so D'XD. Also this you can change to your light lightning and very important is this export setting so here i want that the pictures are exported to capture 123 this will mean that it op automatically opens the import prompt into capture 123 again if you use lightroom this is not needed so i will click start processing now and depending on what machine you have this might take a while and it would be a good time now to take a coffee or have a shower here with my r5 files on my macbook pro it takes about one minute for all three so I will sit this out. So the processing is now finished. I will just close this uh, window here and you can see in the background that the import prompt of Capture One has already opened 
And now it's important for the import destination to not put your usual folder, but just add to catalog because they are already stored in the same folder as your original file. So this is most likely where you want to keep them. So I put to add to catalog and I will import all three of them. This should be quite quick as they will just be added to the catalog and not physically moved anywhere. I will now give them a blue color tag just for distinguishing them from the ones that we did before. Um, put them in the same uh, put them in the same collection as the other. And if we now go to the squirrel picture and compare the original raw and the one from DXO pure raw and we zoom really tightly in. Um, actually, we need to make sure that the um, general or standard sharpening and noise reduction is turned off in both versions. And here we can see a huge difference in my opinion. With DxO Pure Raw, we managed to get rid of a lot of the noise in the background. Um, the Squirtle fur didn't have so much noise, but still there is some kind of noise reduction. It worked quite well and we still have all the fur details. I did, don't think we lost much here. Uh, I refer to this as a squirrel. I hope it is one. I'm really not sure with the animals of Singapore. So what I want to show you now is how I would finish the editing of this picture. There's not much I would do, but some small things. So first of all, the exposure is actually quite okay. It's not too bright, not too dark. Um, we'll maybe darken it a tiny bit, but not much. Maybe give a bit more contrast. I find the background is a bit distracting, so I will try to edit this separately now. I will use this magic brush here in a Capture One. In Lightroom, you can just select the background. This should work quite well with these AI tools. And here I might need to do several strokes. I can increase the tolerance here a bit, but not too much. Otherwise, we risk that, yeah, exactly, that the squirrel is also taken. So now the rest I will do manually. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's just to give you an idea of how I would continue editing my pictures usually. So I'm just going to mask more or less all the background. And then in the next step, make sure that um, this branch where it's sitting and especially the squirrel itself is not kind of affected by the selection. And I'm also going to make this mask a tiny bit softer with the feathering. And once I'm happy, I will now just edit the background and I will remove a bit of contrast here. And maybe remove the clarity a bit. Um, just brighten this up a bit and Put the whites down just, as I said, to make it a bit less distracting. And if we zoom in, you can still see that there is a tiny bit of leftover noise, really not disturbing, but if this would be more, you could also reduce the noise further here because there is no details that we can lose in the background. Um, and then if I go back to the background, I think now I will give a bit more dark tones, darken it a bit. Um, I will maybe adjust the white balance a tiny bit. I think it could, is a bit too greenish, which happens quite often if you shoot in the rainforest. So if we check the before and after, it's definitely not a huge difference, but I think it helps to just make the background look a bit less distracting without uh, doing too much work here and altering the image too much. But of course, this is up to you how much you want to do. I just hope that this video was helpful for you, helping to get more out of your RAW files in terms of noise reduction. Um, if you want to test DX or Pure Raw 3 for free for 30 days, I put a link below and if you would buy it over the link, it would help my channel a bit. It would not cost you more, of course. And I would be curious, how do you treat files that were shot under really low light conditions where not much light was hitting the sensor? Let me know in the comments and see you next time.